Hello, welcome back to Slice and Dice. No, uh, nothing interesting today. I don't feel like doing complex art right now. I find it to be a little bit, uh, it makes, the amount of effort it takes to get a good complex hard run is just not for me right now. I kind of just want to turn on the, turn on the recording software and run it. So that's what I'm going to do. And we get a nice easy curse here. Probably one of the easiest. I'm working on piecing together a video, like a starter guide for a hard wind streaking for those of you out there who would like to get into it. If you would like to get into it, the first thing you can do is go read the spreadsheet I put together. I think it's in the in the description. I've updated it uh, to be mostly all of my thoughts. The only thing that isn't really finished is the items, which is tough because it's probably the most important part of this game is making sure that you select your items well. But it's a lot of effort to put together all my item thoughts, so I haven't done it yet. But I'm happy with the units and the curses. I've organized it pretty well, I feel. And I updated it to have all the curses as well. But just that being said, third turn wisps. I think add wisp is my pick right now for easiest curse. But, well, no, sorry, because when I talk about this stuff, I always say this is my pick for easiest curse, and then someone goes, oh, well, what about this curse? And I'll go, oh, yeah, you're right. That is easier, but, and the but, the asterisk, is that you will probably not see the curse that you asked me about. So, for example, uh, I think third turn wisps is the easiest curse in the game. Oh, well, what, or sorry, no, because third turn wisps is a 1 in 10, which is why I think it's so easy. Uh, but like, I say Add Wisp is the easiest curse in the game because you'll see it fairly frequently. Uh, but in actuality, the easiest curse in the game, I think it's indisputably third turn goblins. I'm pretty sure... I, I don't think you can give me an argument that says third turn goblins isn't the easiest curse in the game. Uh, well, oh, and then because I haven't been completely technically correct, someone could then inevitably say, Oh, well, what about add bones? Or what about uh, AE? Although AE was kind of gross when I played it, but you get the idea. For hard. I am, the implication here is that I am speaking about classic hard. Don't, don't talk to me, straw man. I'm not listening to you. Get out of here, straw man. No one likes your argument because it's dumb. And if you um actually me on the internet, I think less of you. Again, not you, the viewer, you, the straw man I have made up to argue with while I go through these early fights. Ooh, interesting pick. So, this is the sort of change in philosophy that I think has been very important for me going forward. Brute versus Druid, if you look only in, an, in isolation at these two units, is probably just Druid, right? I think Druid has better upsides than Brute. But my opinion on the meta for reds has shifted away from these high mana value characters, and it's been shifting towards uh, units that help keep yourselves alive or imp impact in some other way, like Fey or Enchanter with the items for them. Um, so, while I think Brute is just fairly middle of the road, Brute's actually super good here too. Uh, one of the biggest things you can do in this game is combine this unit spellblade with a yellow that has a three that is consistent and then you can imbue to reach four and i'm finding that you typically only need one four per fight that's a big fight i almost want to hold the stun because you're eight i think i should hold the stun and then I'll imbue on this fight, probably. Oh, never mind. Well, let's see. I think I will imbue. That's fine. Um, but yeah, it's mostly now about... Uh, I'm finding, anyway, most fights you don't need to be hitting fours a lot of times. You need to hit fours occasionally. Not a ton, though. It's nice if you can do fours, but it's just as well if you can do two plus two in a lot of cases. Anyway, I'm gonna pick up Powdered Mana. I had a crazy run on stream. I played, I had Statue with Powdered Mana and then I hit Wax Seal. So my Statue was guaranteed six mana per turn. 
That one was crazy. I haven't been bringing stream runs over for uh, like highlighted videos anymore. And mostly it's just because if you want to see the runs from the stream, you can go watch it. Uh, they're all online now. Don't forget. They're all there for you if you're interested. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, thanks to the new change in Twitch policy, all of the streams are online uh, on the channel. You just have to switch to the live tab. I know it's uh, maybe something you haven't noticed or you haven't seen because it's kind of off to the side, but they're up there for you if you want to watch them. Favors Maiko. I think Maiko is pretty nice here because it's another way to get to four, which will sometimes matter, but so is Faye. And Faye pairs super well with Spellblade because you can boost uh, the one and also has no X's, so. We can pick up any blue here that isn't named Evoker and be pretty happy. My my real opinions have shifted a ton ever since I realized that I can just cut uh, cut Evoker out of my value analysis of this game. I think Evoker is garbage now, and because I think Evoker is garbage, I've been having a lot easier of a time. Uh, I have two two one, and I'd like to do it to this barrel, but I guess I can't. Well, it's technically best to go 2-3-1, I suppose. It's fine. The biggest Fey weakness is anything that has any amount of, well, weaken really takes Fey down a notch. So we'll be looking out for... Uh, the biggest problem is Lich, I think, but it'll probably be alright anyway. Two, I think I have lethal. Even with that miss, I think it's still good. It's not quite. Off by one. I shouldn't waste my imbue, I guess. It's fine to not spend the resource. Ah, and then the wisp gets here. And this is the first fight that the wisp has done anything. And I'd love to point out as well, if you're still unsure about this third turn wisp curse, which I don't think anyone's unsure about this curse right now, but uh, nonetheless, I will still point out the Wisp spawns in and then immediately does nothing and dies. Same thing there, if it was third turn Goblin, it would just run immediately, so even worse. I think Whetstone is really good if you haven't selected your tier 2 yellow yet. Since I have, it becomes a little less good. I'm also willing to pick up Sprout. I think sometimes... Also, I should have put this out. Yeah, it's a waste. I think sometimes your run does end up... I, I actually don't want Buckle ever rolling mana in this build. Sometimes you end up in a run where you have to really go long, and Sprout is super good at going long. I think specifically this is just another item you can take if the other tier 3 isn't very good. And then suddenly we just have another way to beat Hexia, because having a 1 mana heal 3 is so bad for Hexia. I don't know what she does about that. Probably just dies, to be honest. I don't really think Hexia can do anything to a fully charged up Sprout. And even at its worst, right, you're paying 3 for 3, which is the same as paying 2 for 2. Almost. It is almost the same as paying 2 for 2. Those rolls were not very good, game. Did not like that very much at all. I'm actually going to poison the slate. Uh, if I'm going to do that, I should just imbue Weaken. I think so. The Wisp is spawning in here. Um, again, yeah, it's not even going to have an impact until turn 4. It might actually let me make this bandit run, even. I think probably not, but we can check. Probably you've been really missing your 1 damage, 1 mana in this fight. Thank you. I was about to start complaining. Hold on, there's something here. I can sense it. This would never make you flee, though. One burst. Burst, burst. No, it never makes him flee, actually. He can't. Okay. 
Uh, I'm off by one. One damage to make him flee. I guess Initiate can live. You're allowed to continue your life. But I want you to know, I thought about letting you die. Yeah, this is the guy, don't pick this guy and then everything's fine. Knight combos pretty well with Spellblade too. It's just a good side for Copycat to be able to look at. Because now I can roll Steel plus Copycat and be pretty happy. It's not like a big deal, I'm not really looking for it, but if it happens, it's cool. I think you should always lock growth here as well. But yeah, the Fey boosting Spellblade is good enough, right? My reds often will be doing nothing, so Fey turning Spellblade into two damage, two mana is fine. Basically giving me one damage, one mana, which is fine. I mean, one damage, one mana is good in most fights. Eight versus seven. I have so much trouble. I don't know why. I just cannot mentally count these. It doesn't work for me. Any steel sides? Nice. Okay. So I could go... Might as well do two, right? Why not? Doesn't feel like it makes a big difference, does it? I actually don't think I'm super into this. I'm not. Because instead you can just go imbue... Plus five, kill Slime Queen. And we have all of this mana just sitting here ready for me to use it. You know, I think it comes out to be exactly the same. Wait, does it come out to be exactly the same? No, I'm down two mana and I hit the Slimer one time in the other way. This is fine. Oh hey, the Wisp spawned in. This fight that actually does get to do something to me. It's almost an issue. This initiate is not missing, though. There we go. Okay. I'm happy to roll weaken here and then just weaken. I guess nothing, actually. This could be a sprout angle. But in this fight, why would I sprout when instead I could just do murder? Right, what if I just prime? What if I just obliterate? Oh, that's right. These Slimers, as an enemy, just aren't that threatening. We'll get a Wisp in two turns. Holy shit, this initiate is showing up. You gotta respect the hustle. That's a four mana from growth. I'm just gonna say it. That's not how that's supposed to go. That's really not how that's supposed to go down. Initiate isn't supposed to roll growth four straight turns, but I'm not complaining. All right. Mana Bomb Jester Cap. I think Mana Bomb is not very good. Well, I guess I will pick up Jester's Cap, but I don't really like Jester's Cap. I know a lot of people love this item. I don't think this is very good. Honestly, it is pretty bad. I might just pick up the random. Mana Bomb... If you ever press this, it's pretty unfortunate. I'm gonna take the random. Ah, oh, so much happier with Unholy Strength. God damn, that is a lot better. This is quickly rising to be one of my favorite items in the game. It's so good to be able to put a plus one to your units. Like, it just doesn't matter about the rest. I don't have to care about the rest. I'm getting a plus one to Fey on the middle sides. On Faye. Nice, good job. Now, there is a chest here. There's actually two chests here, and two graves. Initiate is getting... Opt. I can trade Initiate's life for a few dollars. I don't really feel like it's all that good.
Yeah, so we'll go... And then burst, and it's fine. Actually, there's a better play. Hold on. You can imbue... And then exert into the grave. We'll get one item for it. This fight can be a little tricky. These chests have thrown me a little bit off. Because uh, I missed a little damage on these graves that I should have had. Oh, and also this can happen, and now my Fae is killed. No real counterplay. But at least I get one more boost out. For the road. Sorry, Faye. It's just how it goes. It's This fight would normally be no trouble for me, and I would have no issue keeping everyone alive, but the two chests throw it off. The damage from the chests really gives me a little more trouble than we would like to face, but that's okay. We'll gather, and man, Petrified Knight is so unfortunate. My man is having a bad time. But the chests, they add a little bit of spice. And sometimes, in some fights in this level, you are killed. That didn't happen here, so it's okay. And I got liquor, which is not very worthwhile, but, you know. Sparky Caldera. I have bad mana gain, and these are the two mana gain guys. Uh, definitely feel like I want to play Caldera, but I think I my mana gain isn't so terrible. I think I could probably get away with Sparky, because I have Fae Spellblade. And Sparky is good. People including myself, have dunked on Sparky for a very long time because of his bad posture and his no bitches. But especially with Unholy Strength, this unit becomes very consistent, and this spell is way better than I originally thought. So even Sparky gets his resurgence. There really is... Uh, I, I feel like there really... It's been almost every unit gets a moment to shine, I think there really is only one character left that has not had their, oh man, maybe I was wrong about you. I think Cleric may be the final shitter. The last line of defense in the, oh my god, I can't believe this character is in the game, wars. Even Guardian, I've come around a little bit on Guardian. This side combos with Steel pretty well. Um... I mean, Illudis has his case. I think there's a case for even Wanderer. Twin has their case. Ooh, Shaman. Shaman also has not had a chance to be redeemed. Anyway, Shaman is still pretty garbage. All right, Sparky. Let's impress everyone. Let's see some cool shit, Sparky. Are you your plus three after I hit the M? Sparky, no. Okay, great job, Sparky. This, you know, I've said before, the one mana... Uh, the one mana... Or the two mana, two damage side that Sparky has is the best tier three side, or tier two side in the game. And man, oh man, he has an even better one. What do you know? And then we can zap the old imp. Good stuff. It's not super important to play for Sparky's charge sides, I don't think. Sparky's strength is the zap, and if you ever have a place where you can uh, charge, he's pretty fine. Also, two mana is one of his worst outputs here, so I'm good to just kind of... Well, we could check here real quick what we get. We get a dead bones, we get a dead imp, and we win. Seems good to me. Shuriken tankard. I have no poison, so I'm probably just picking up shuriken. Fine. Shuriken usually ends up to be okay. Uh, Sparky, I will be taking your unholy strength back over to Fey now. It's better on Fey because boosting Spellblade to three mana is better than Sparky generating two mana. Because then Sparky is free to do other things. He also, I think he gets a lot better with powdered mana to cover up that one X. You get to roll a lot more aggressively for him. This dies, this dies, or he gets weakened, I suppose, and then Faye is fine. Ooh, I could roll for the... Nah, I just roll for two mana. Oh, he hits those! 
This is the Frail Edges Jinx. If I haven't shielded my units, they take double damage. So you'll see they're taking four, even though there's only two targeted at them. Uh, this Wiz is dead, though. Sorry, I have too many spells. Thank you. Keeper, I think, is very good. I have my, my opinion of Keeper has shifted to be very strong, like Keeper a lot. I find them acceptable. They do... I wanted Cleanse, which is why I didn't like Keeper for a long time, and Keeper doesn't have any way to cleanse, which is a shame, but ultimately it's okay. What's the worst you could roll here? I like this. I think it's still fine no matter what you roll. So we'll break one intangible. And then even though it doesn't shield, you still get the repel. And you just kill that ghost through its intangible. Probably the biggest value of Sparky. Just killing ghosts is super good. But another, another point to be made here. My old philosophy where you had to play 2 plus 2 to be able to generate enough mana to run a high mana cost unit completely shifted because I have Spellblade, a unit that is breaking the rules. All I'm really seeing is that everything I once thought was incorrect and I have a lot more learning to be done. Which is sick, very interested in that. Uh, fine. I mean, very good, actually. Sparky's gonna go crazy here. I'm looking for... I don't really want this. Baron is dead on this turn in most cases. In this case as well. He dies to that charge side. Scales. Ooh. Scales. Fey? No. I think Scales is sometimes very good. I think Scales is not very good here, though. It really struggles to show up anything meaningful. Because the only characters that have right sides uh, are zeros anyway. Although I can I can use liquor, hold on. Oh, I can use liquor. No, okay, I take skills. It's not super good right now. It actually does very little right now, but down the line I think this will do a lot. And even if it doesn't. The steel pendant that I passed on wasn't that interesting, I don't feel like. Definitely these. Spay probably doesn't want to weaken here. Gotta be careful I don't die to spikes. Okay, not a great turn. Spiker takes... Three. Nah, it has to be like. Oh, and I need to weaken the bird so Brute isn't killed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna waste this dice. Our next turn will be better. Two self shield. Good. I'm not locking weak into. Come on, Faye. Come on, Faye. What's going on here? Kind of throwing. Uh, we could do this maybe. And keep Sparky just sack my brute. What else do you have here that looks okay? We can ignore this shield up brute. The problem is that there's no, like, I can't then get one mana without a Spellblade also becoming killed. So it starts to look like we might want to just make a play to be sure I don't lose because we're into a bit of a 
you get overconfident and die sort of situation here. You can kind of spiral out of control. And that play is the Sacrifice Brute. I'm almost certain. I don't need the Burst Sparky then either. Could put a 2 at the spike, right? Either key. Well, no, you can see that. Yeah, I think if you try to greed Brute there, especially with the Wisp spawning, things can get kind of dire. Copycat charged. No, I need mana. I don't think Faye would do me dirty here. Faye has done me dirty here. Alright, well... That's not great, but... It's mostly just irritating. Mm. Or I could actually do... Oh, if you don't give Sparky the heal shield, he is being killed. So, you know, he can have it. It's okay, Faye. You'll hit your boost eventually this fight. Two sides, it's, it's reasonable. It's actually logical that it would take you five trillion years. Oh, it copies the chain, right. So you can just do that. It's reasonable that it would take you that long to hit one of those sides, though. No, I think it really is. The problem with Forsaken is that Forsaken kind of sucks. But in this run, I think Forsaken might not suck. Which is kind of weird. Because Faye is so good with this heal 2 boost. But I can play Forsaken, and you can play... Unholy Strength. You get 4 mana, Revive 3, Heal 3. I think this isn't very worthwhile. I'm gonna pick Barb. It's just worth thinking about Forsaken there. But Barb is pretty good. Especially with Keeper here to heal shield Barb. It's worth taking the time though. I, I want to avoid snap picking in the way that I used to. Because I feel like it built a lot of bad habits. I'm so fucking sick of your bullshit, Faye. Who are you working for? Just tell me which one of these enemies paid you off so we can get this shit over with. I just want to know how we got here. There's no reason to boost here. It doesn't push anything meaningful. It doesn't matter. I mean, I hit the barb combo. It's all good. Done. Erythrocyte or Icker Chalice? Icker Chalice, and then we play for... Oh. Okay, I, I want to pick this because I think it's kind of cool. Icker Chalice Barbarian, he self-heals, but it, it goes through the shield and breaks the shield. So when you self-heal, self-shield, he'll just do a bonus 8 damage to the topmost enemy. I don't think it's very good, but I think it's kind of cool. So, here I go. I lock the 8. Someone has a Basilisk to kill. This could be bad. Ah, huh, good job. I mean, it's going to go into an illusion anyway, but... I could maybe make it hit a thorn. Nice, that's kind of cool. I don't know if I should do this, but I'm going to do this. I don't care about the rest, it's too exciting. All right, now I'm in a little trouble. It's just, it's actually kind of hard for our team to dispose of all of these thorns. I might have to send someone to their death named Barbarian. Especially with rolls like these. What's going on here, team? Oh, Bew 
hit here. Turkle. Oh, it's not wasted healing though. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, I should probably just do... Hmm, it's kind of tough, you know? I, I would like my Barbarian to live, but I wonder how viable it really is. Sometimes I lose to these thorns for playing this way, but because these guys aren't dead, I think I should always be at least able to trade. And some, a lot of times I feel my uh, keeper should be able to keep someone alive. But yeah, this is a lot of petrifies and a whole lot of nothing to do here. I kill one. Sparky kind of fumbled the bag here, though, with this charged roll. Could kill a wisp. Ah, hold on. So if I do this into this... I could then shield Sparky and kill here. My Spellblade is for sure dying to poison. There's nothing to be done. But now I have a chance for Barbarian to live, which is... It was a lot of effort, but it was worth it. Going into this fight to have Barbarian full health. Wizard prob... I mean, Wizard not probably. Wizard for sure. Like a trillion percent Wizard. This is probably just become this has probably just become a keep spell blade run where i to take a little guess that's kind of nice having a 10 damage no death side solid but wizard very regularly chains this into four mana which is super super busted with inspire Oh, or you can just boost. Pretty nice as well. Lots of ways that wizard just takes this fight over. Because even though he's immune, he perma boosts himself. We go to shield here. Barring a throw of unfathomable proportions, wizard solos on this next turn. It's gonna look real scary. Hey, wizard. I said it's going to look real scary. Okay. That's all he has to do. Because now the way it turns out is he goes 5, and then he chains off of himself into 10. And then the fight's over. Cool, right? Enhanced Wand Prism. This team has one problem. Her name is Hexia, and she's really annoying. Every other boss is going to get stomped. It's not going to be close. I don't think either of these help me against Hexia, so I'm going to pick a random. Well. I mean, I guess. It's actually pretty good for Hexia. I don't know if I'm keeping Spellblade to the end. I'm probably not keeping Fey to the end. Although, these, you know, great, great case to be made with these boost rolls. Oh, you're getting clocked. Keeper, do something. Thank you. If I get to go turn one perma boost up to plus three on wizard into turn two. This is bottom poison, Jinx. Yeah, turn one perma boost into turn two this roll. It's super hard to lose. Actually, I think Barb hits on the spiker. 
Don't forget, he's also ranged, Mr. Wizard. The best thing I could have picked up for this run is Light, the spell. We should actually... Sorry, one moment, one moment. I should imbue to... Kill. Okay. Dabalist or Fate. I think Dabalist isn't terrible. Fate is also pretty good. We can do a lot of saving Wizard from trouble here if I pick up Strand. Dabalist is okay. I want to probably keep Spellblade though, and Fate is good too. We want to have units with the mana gain keyword to chain in case of bad rolls. So, I think it's fine to play Fate here. This item, this Icar Chalice, has become pretty worthless, but that's okay. I wanted to see if it would work, and the other options weren't that important, so we can just pretend that I randomed into Stasis if you want. If it makes you feel any better. I get a 6 damage steal, and get a like 3 million damage Barbarian hit here. But first I'd like to go... Or reuse. Or dodge there. Kill here. Oh, I just win. That's pretty cool. Ah, oh, neat. I just win the game there. Or I win the fight there. Uh, five through seven is Icar Chalice, Shuriken. Is this seven? Oh, that's seven. Gross. Uh, okay, I don't want Emerald Mirror for that reason. Can't play it with Cauldron, so Chaos Wand is fine. Who's holding this? Probably Fate. There's nothing wrong with a little Chaos Wand. It's just a very all-in pick. A lot of times it's gonna miss, but it's not like I'm gonna be upset about Keeper hitting Chaos Wand. I think I've been playing a lot of Wizard lately. I don't know if uh, I actually have been playing a lot of Wizard lately, because I... Well, I don't know if you think I've been playing a lot of Wizard lately is the better way to put it. Because I have been streaming and playing this here. Hard to keep it all in line. <laughs> that was kind of cute. Uh, here goes... I can be you... First, first, sure. That looks fine. It wasn't a great turn from Wizard, but that's okay. I don't mind. Six damage right. I don't really want it. Even It's still plus one, but I don't really want it. Anyway. You just put one of those away. Yeah, he is, uh... He is no longer asking. I can reuse this for a run. Does it spawn in first? It does spawn in first. I wasn't actually sure if the enemy spawned in before or after the check to run. Alright, and here we are at Dragon. I'm gonna keep Spellblade for this fight. And... Dragon's attack, is it heavy? It is heavy, okay. So Dragon's Bite will always go... It won't always go to Barbarian. Uh, sometimes the Caw will peck Barbarian, and then Dragon Coin Flip's going to Keeper or Wizard. Uh, also, if I get cleaved here, it'll Coin Flip Barbarian or Wizard. But that's also assuming that nothing ever goes to my Wizard on the attack front. Uh, all of this is to say I'm not too worried. I'll live through poison with rescue. I, I think this fight's kind of a wash. Oh yeah, especially if I roll this. Because I can imbue it too. Oh, and then I can copycat it? Ooh, okay. I'll roll for the bigger hits here. I'm pretty sure this is going to be lethal. Oh, it isn't ranged. I didn't know that. Oh, sorry, I forgot to imbue. There you go. And then you go here. Yeah, what do you know? That's the big thing about Chaos Wand. 
thumb runs where you pick this item up, it just lets you one turn because it's so strong. Uh, cleave, engage, vulnerable is absurd. The rest of the words here don't matter, but engage vulnerable in particular, any... Oh, I could have put right on it, but not right on it wouldn't have been right. Because then you couldn't copycat it, actually. Worth mentioning, though. You know what? We had all ten of our... Or no, we had nine items laid out. And once again, I picked Sprout and then never cast it. I think I cast it zero times. That's the classic of Sprout, though. Anyway, thank you for watching. I had a good time with this one. I had fun. Hope you enjoyed as well. Uh, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you want to see more. Go join the Discord if you feel like it. We can talk about Slice and Dice if you want. So long.